Hi, I'm Ruben from RespShop.com, your online retailer for everything related to CPAP. And we're also the company that keeps you informed for free about all the CPAP and sleep apnea related information you could ever need. You're most welcome. But maybe give us a like and subscribe to show how much you care and to stay updated. Well, today I'm going to be giving you all of the information you need to know to understand obstructive sleep apnea. I'm going to explain everything from the difference between obstructive sleep apnea and other types of sleep apnea, the reasons why it is important to know whether you have obstructive sleep apnea and why you need to treat it, the signs, symptoms, and risk factors to look out for if you suspect you might have obstructive sleep apnea, what to do if you want to know for sure and get a medical diagnosis, the kinds of treatments there are available, and an explanation of what a CPAP machine is and does and why it is important to have one if you do get an obstructive sleep apnea diagnosis. Whew. Well, as you can tell, it's quite a lot we've got to get through, so we better get started. As the name suggests, obstructive sleep apnea is a type of sleep apnea. But even though it is the most common type, it is not the only type. There are two main other types, central sleep apnea and mixed sleep apnea, which is also known as complex sleep apnea. What these disorders have in common is that they cause your breathing to stop and start during sleep. Where the types of sleep apnea differ is in what causes your breathing issues. In the case of central sleep apnea, the cause is related to the brain. What happens is that the signals from the brain that control the muscles related to breathing get disrupted and this causes breathing to stop and start intermittently. Central sleep apnea is generally seen in those with heart conditions like congestive heart failure or in those over the age of 65, but it can also be associated with certain kinds of pain medication, antidepressants, neurological deficits or even living at high altitudes. By contrast, the most common type of sleep apnea is obstructive sleep apnea, and this is caused by a physical obstruction of the airways. What usually happens is that the muscles that control your airway relax too much, which means your throat narrows when you inhale a breath, making your lungs have to work harder than they should. This means that your breathing becomes very shallow and can sometimes stop entirely. Your brain eventually responds by waking you up for a moment to reopen your airway, something accompanied with sometimes a gasp, a snort or a body jerk, and then you fall asleep again and the cycle repeats. The amount of times this happens per hour of sleep is known as your apnea hypopnea index or AHI for short. And in fact, this process of subconsciously waking throughout a night of sleep even happens to those who aren't diagnosed with sleep apnea. Anything with an AHI of up to five, that's five instances of pausing or stopping of breath per hour, is considered a safe range without the need for sleep therapy. A consistent AHI between five to 30 would likely lead to a diagnosis of sleep apnea and anything over 30 AHI is considered to be severe sleep apnea. That means for those suffering from obstructive sleep apnea, your body is waking between five and 30 times per hour all night, every single night. It goes without saying that this means you get a very disrupted sleep, even if you're not aware of it. And not only is it the throat muscles that can obstruct your breathing either. Other things such as obesity, swollen tonsils, and even genetic physical attributes can result in obstructive sleep apnea as well. Most sleep specialists use the Malampati score to determine the sizing of a person's airway in relation to whether their soft palate or tissues are too large for the area. As you can see, a lot of what determines whether or not you have sleep apnea is outside of your control. Mixed or complex sleep apnea is the third main type, and it includes elements of both central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea, and similarly comes from a mixture of their causes. So basically, if you put the last two kinds together into a hybrid super kind of sleep apnea, you get mixed sleep apnea. Lucky you. Because of sleep apnea's relationship to breathing and therefore oxygen intake, the Mayo Clinic refers to it as a serious sleep disorder. Reduced oxygen intake during sleep, along with the repeated disturbances to your sleep pattern, can have several unwanted effects. The most reported symptom is, unsurprisingly, daytime fatigue. Those suffering from sleep apnea regularly complain that they constantly feel tired during the day and have trouble getting out of bed in the morning. This can cause adults to have an increased risk of accident and children to suffer in their schoolwork. And besides that, who wants to feel tired all of the time? I know I don't. 
And there are also less obvious complications associated with distracted sleep apnea too, including cardiovascular issues, eye problems, metabolic disorders, insulin resistance, increased risk of stroke or congestive heart failure, high blood pressure, and fertility issues within men and women. Even neurological deficits such as Alzheimer's and dementia are directly connected to obstructive sleep apnea. All of this means that if you do have obstructive sleep apnea, then it's important to know that you do so that you can get suitable treatment. The signs that you may have obstructive sleep apnea are also the symptoms of sleep apnea. Makes sense. Common signs and symptoms include regular daytime tiredness, a dry or a sore mouth when you wake up, loud snoring, morning headaches, night sweats, restlessness during your sleep, waking up suddenly feeling like you're gasping or choking, a low sex drive, and high blood pressure. Of course, with any of these signs, there can be many underlying reasons for them. But if you notice that you have several of these, or if you have a bed partner who notices that you have several of these, then obstructive sleep apnea could well be the cause, and it might be worth checking out further, especially if you also have some of the risk factors associated with it. Speaking of risk factors, these include being male, being older, being a person of color, having a family history of sleep apnea, smoking, asthma, diabetes, high blood pressure, being overweight, and having certain physiological features such as a thick neck, a larger tongue, or smaller airways. Now, the signs and risk factors I've mentioned only provide a rough indication of whether or not you're likely to have obstructive sleep apnea. And the most common signs such as tiredness, dry mouth, and snoring can range from mid and occasional to severe and chronic. You might be able to get a better idea of the likelihood of your having this condition by asking your bed partner if you have one about your sleeping habits at night. And you can also try to vary things up such as your sleeping position to see if that makes a difference. It might also be worth considering other possible explanations for the symptoms you're experiencing. Tiredness, for example, can be the result of many things like high levels of stress or even depression. But if after considering your experiences and the information in this video, you think you might have obstructive sleep apnea, then there's only really one way to know for sure, and that is by getting tested. Any treatment for obstructive sleep apnea first requires getting it diagnosed. To diagnose obstructive sleep apnea, a sleep study is needed. One option is to get a sleep study done by your doctor. This may require you to spend a night in a sleep lab or to have a study done in your home via monitors. Another option is to avoid the hassle and cost of visiting your doctor and to purchase a disposable in-home sleep study kit through respshop.com. Our kits come with a 15-minute online consultation with a sleep physician, and you'll get a small device sent to you to wear on your finger while you sleep in your bed at home. The device will then track data patterns over the course of multiple nights, measuring things like your blood oxygen levels and breathing patterns, and then it transmits this data to your healthcare provider. After that, your results are evaluated by a certified sleep physician who will provide you with a report and, if required, a diagnosis and prescription for treatment. So let's say you've been diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. What are the treatments that are available? Well, to start with, there are some things you can do to reduce the symptoms on your own. Speak to your doctor whether a lifestyle change may improve your sleep apnea, from things such as weight reduction, limiting alcohol or caffeine, increasing exercise, or trying positional therapy. But beyond that, something that nearly all diagnoses of obstructive sleep apnea will come with is a prescription for purchasing a da -da -da -da. CPAP device. If that's the case, then it's worth first talking to your insurance company to see if your health plan will offset or completely cover the cost of one of these. But even if not, and you decide to buy a machine on your own, you will still need a prescription before you can buy one. But hold on, I haven't even told you what a CPAP machine is and how it works. Well, let's change that right now. 
A CPAP machine is a device that counteracts the effects of obstructive sleep apnea by making sure your throat doesn't excessively narrow while you sleep, so your brain doesn't wake you up. And if your brain doesn't wake you up repeatedly in the night, then you can get that wonderful, deep and uninterrupted sleep you've no doubt become desperate for. And many of the troubling symptoms should simply disappear. At that point, your CPAP will become your new best friend. But how do they work? Well, all CPAP machines have two main components. The first is a mask that you wear over either your nostrils, your nose, or like this one, part of your nose and mouth. And then there's the machine itself, which connects to the mask via a hose, or as it's sometimes known, tubing. The CPAP machine controls the airflow into your lungs and monitors your sleep patterns at the same time. The basic principle is to make sure the pressure of the air entering your lungs is sufficient to keep your airways open and prevent you from waking up. The CPAP does this by pushing a gentle but steady flow of air through the mask and into your airways when you breathe. Now this is what the PAP letters stand for, positive air pressure. The C stands for continuous. And so a CPAP machine is a device that provides continuous positive air pressure at a level chosen specifically for you to ensure your airway stays open and your sleep remains uninterrupted. But even though all such breathing devices come under the umbrella term of CPAP, not all of them work in the exact same way. There are also APAP machines, VPAP machines, and BiPAP machines. And for any CPAP machine, there are a range of features it might come with and accessories that you might require too. A lot will depend on your individual sleep pattern, comfort requirements, and of course, budget. I don't have time to go into all the details of the differences between machines and their accessories in this video, but we have done plenty of other videos on our channel that explain those differences, that review individual machines and go over their various accessories too. So go ahead and check those out. And you can always visit respshop.com to find a wealth of information on sleep apnea, CPAP machines and other advice. But if you are looking for information with that more personal touch, then we'd love to have a chat with you and help to answer any of the questions that you might have as well. You can do that over at respshop.com where we have our respiratory therapists, polysomnographic techs, and a nurse on staff to give you the most relevant information and advise you when making a purchase decision. So give us a call or visit our site and wherever you are, sleep tight. Till next time, friends.